you through your first implementation of a feature flag in Harness. What you see on your screen here is an application I've written that does something very simple. It gets the weather and returns it from an endpoint. You'll see here I have my route v1 slash temperature that takes a city and units that the person wants to see the temperature in. Now what I want to do is I want to implement a feature where I'm caching the results from my API endpoint on the back end. I don't want to have to always get the freshest information because I might run into API limits or performance issues. So let's go ahead and switch to my next branch and we'll show you what this looks like. So here's my first implementation of this. Rather than just giving the straight answer, if it's in my cache, I'm going to go ahead and return it. If it's not, I'll go ahead and cache those results out. Now let's go ahead and test this implementation and see if there's any issues with it. So I will go ahead and check out the cache feature branch. And we'll go ahead and run the test suite that I've included here. It'll build the Docker image and it will run several tests against it. It'll output the weather from many different cities in both Imperial as well as metric. Now, you may notice a problem here. Because of the way I've implemented the caching, it is cache one value for both Imperial as well as metric. A little sloppy on my part, but these are the types of mistakes that can happen when you're implementing a cache. This is the type of thing that I would need to roll back as quickly as possible, otherwise I risk exposing a lot of my customers to very wrong behavior from my API. So, in this case, I would have to roll it back and push out a previous version, or I'd have to hotfix this but I could show you a better way to do this. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and implement this as a feature flag instead of just a update to my application. Let me walk you through what it looks like in the code and then I'll show you how it actually works live. So if we go into app.py, I've made a number of changes from the last version. I've included the client here for feature flags. Now. This is the same in most languages, that you'll have some kind of SDK import first. We initialize our client, and then ultimately, whenever we want to serve that new behavior, we check against a specific feature flag. Now, the feature flag does cache these results locally, so this is not going to have to wait and talk to a remote server every single time. If it doesn't have the answer, or if the flag is turned off, it will serve false, so it will not cache until it's been told to. So let's go ahead and set it up so we can actually see this behavior change in real time. You'll see here in the Harness UI, I have a brand new project with nothing in it. First thing we have to do is we have to set up an environment. We'll just name the environment Laptop. Now this could be a production environment, staging, whatever it is, but we'll start simple generating a key here and we'll go ahead and we'll set our feature flag environment variable to this value. Now after we set up our environment we'll go ahead and set up our feature flag. So we'll use a boolean and you'll recall here the name of our feature flag was cache result. So we'll go ahead and put that here. We'll go to next. We'll make when the flag is enabled, it'll be true. Save and close. So this is just a simple on off toggle and it's currently set to off. So let's go ahead and rerun our test and see what happens. You'll see I have to check out the feature flag cache branch. and we'll go ahead and run our tests. Now, as before, it'll build the image and it'll go ahead and run through a list of cities here. Currently, we're in the off position for the feature flag. So you'll see, 
behavior is as normal without the feature implemented. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on here from the harness side. This is a change that will happen almost instantaneously on the other side. You'll see that Chicago right here is now showing the same behavior as when I enabled the cache. However, instead of having to roll back, I can immediately cut my behavior back to the previous behavior. Now you see the next result is as expected. So this is a very simple example of being able to hide a feature behind a feature flag, be able to roll it out, and then be able to immediately cut back when you see there's an issue. Now if I wanted to get much more advanced, this is subject for another video, I could do a percentage rollout. I could also target specific users. Rather than say, I want to serve to everybody, I could have an internal tester or similar, or even a target group and say, I want my beta customers to see this new behavior first. This can help de-risk these changes and make it so you don't risk exposing your entire user base to a bad change. So that's a very simple example there. I'll make my code available to you online and you can walk through the same thing and be able to see the feature implementation without feature flag, then with, and be able to toggle that on and off.